So now that we understand the ideas behind dimensional analysis, we can start talking about actually doing some conversions. So um, first we're going to start with conversions within the metric system because believe it or not, they're actually easier than working in the U.S. system or working between the metric and the U.S. system. So we'll start, we'll start with the just converting between units within the metric system. So I've got an example up here. I want to convert eight <coughs> excuse me, micrograms to nanograms. So micrograms are, we use this funny uh, Greek letter mu often to represent micrograms, but you might also see it represented as mc. So instead of a mu, um, two letters, M and C. And that's, that's why um, we use the mu, because it's only one, usually we only use one letter for a prefix. Um, and having three letters um, at, as a unit of measure um, is, a, is a little different. So you might see it written either way, either as mu or NC. But we want to convert that to nanograms. Okay, so if you pull up your chart and you look, right, we see that one microgram is equal to 10 to the negative 6 grams. Because grams is our, ba remember, our basic unit of measure for weight is grams. So if it says 10 to the negative 6 in that column, that means one microgram is 10 to the negative 6 grams. All right. And I also want to know um, about nanograms. So if I look on the chart, one nanogram is equal to 10 to the negative 9 grams. So the nice thing about having a basic unit of measure, it, we can <coughs> measure both of these micrograms and nanograms in terms of grams. Okay, so now here's the fun part. Hold on to your hat. Um, what if I divide both sides of this by one microgram? What happens? Well, that means this guy is the same. Well, if I divide on both sides by one microgram, what's going to happen over here? We're going to have the same thing over the same thing, and those things are going to cancel out and make one. So you can also think about this as a proportion. We can think about um, 10 to the negative 6 grams per microgram. Either way that you think about it, they're both the same. You can leave the 1 here, right? 1 times anything is itself. So you can leave the 1 or you can, you don't, you, you don't need it. Um, same thing, okay? Um, so how is that helpful to us? Well, we could play the same game over here. We could divide both sides by 1, um, or by 10 to the negative 9 grams. And so we would have 1 nanogram over 10 to the negative 9 grams is the same thing as 1. Sorry, my pen kind of ran out of ink there. All right. So, how in the world is this helpful to us? Well, if each of these things is equivalent to 1, what can you always do in math? We can always multiply by 1 and not change what we actually have. So, I, if I have 8 micrograms and I'm trying to get to nanograms, um, and I can multiply by either one of these. So if I multiply by 10 to the minus 6 grams over 1 microgram, what's going to happen to my microgram? It's going to cancel out, right? So I can cancel this out, and look what I have. I have 8 times 10 to the minus 6 grams. Okay. All right. Well, how is that helpful? Well, if I look at my second equivalence that I have, right, one nanogram per ten is the same as 10 to the negative 9 grams. So this fraction is also equivalent to 1. So I can take 
So this guy, then, what we have up here, I'm just going to rewrite it so we can see it a little. Okay. So my 8 times 10 to the negative 6 grams, I can multiply it by nanogram, 1 nanogram. I'm going to leave the 1 off if that's all right. Um, times or over 10 to the 9 grams. Well, why did I do that? Well, what, what's going to happen to my grams? Yep, they cancel out. And so all I have to do now is the math. I have 8 times 10 to the negative 6. I just have to deal with these numbers. And I have, ta-da, I have my units that I wanted, nanograms. So we just have to remember how our exponent rules work. Right, I have negative 6 minus a minus 9 gives me a positive 3. So what I end up with is 8 times 10 to the third nanograms. All these things are equivalent, right? I'm only multiplying by factors of 1, so they're all still equal. And 10 to the third is 1,000. So I have 8 times 1,000, which is 8,000 nanograms. So 8 micrograms is equivalent to 8,000 nanograms. And there we have it. You could have actually strung uh, all of these, or both of these together. You could have multiplied by 10 to the negative 6 grams uh, per microgram, and then put this fraction next to it, multiply by nanograms over 10 to the 9, minus 9 grams, and done it all in one fail swoop. The hard part is figuring out <coughs> What goes on the top and what goes on the bottom? Because over here, I just as easily could have multiplied by 10 to the negative 6 grams and ended up with 1 microgram, microgram over 10 to the negative 6 grams is equivalent to 1. But that wouldn't have worked here for me because, can you see why it wouldn't have worked? If my micrograms in the top, would they have canceled out? No. So what I do is I think about I want the micrograms in the bottom and I want the nanograms in the top because that's what I'm trying to convert to. So what you're trying to get rid of goes in the bottom. And when you write your equivalence fraction, your a fraction equivalent to one, um, or your, you could think of it as a ratio also. Uh, <coughs> so when you write it, you want what you're trying to what you're starting with and what you're trying to cancel out in the bottom, right? So it'll cancel, and you want what you want to end up with in the top. And sometimes you'll actually have to do a whole string of these guys to get to where you want to go. Um, so let's do another example. 